Mark Smolinski joins me here at Rickerton Racecourse. Very funny place to meet a harness person, but there's a lot of harness people here today. Firstly, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. There is a good reason you're here, but do you come to the races very often? Not the thoroughbreds, no. Um, I'm not. I'm too busy with the standardbreds, really, but my grandson's taken on the kids' carts, and he's pretty keen, so I thought I'd better come and watch him. I must say, I think it's an awesome what they do here. When I, when I heard it was here, I was like, that's a bit odd. The crowd, like, it must be such a buzz for the kids to drive in front of such a big crowd. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's great, great for any sport, you know, for the young kids to get some exposure. And, um, yeah, as I say, on record and on the grass, it's um, magic. Probably a pity there probably wasn't a few more harness people here to cheer them along, but I think it's, it's great, but there's probably a busy week for the harness people as well. Yeah, well, it is. It is a, well, they don't come here till Saturday because they're getting ready for Friday and what have you, so this is just a prelude, and they run round and they, they call it the New Zealand Cup on show day. Which is going to be great, and they get to, like out on the Addington yes. against a big crowd, so it's really, really well done by everyone behind it. I really enjoy what they do, and I think it's great. Oh, it is, and um, you go back 10 years ago, and, 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 and most of the... Um, Kids cats drivers are now leading drivers, you know. Um, I asked you there before, you're still training. I, I know your name because I, I went to Michael House's and he said that, that, I think you said that was your grandfather or your father's? My father's property, yeah. Across the road there, so it's a name that's been synonymous in New Zealand for a long, long time. But yeah, you, From the 70s through, you know. Part of the Golden Mile. Did, did your father ever win a New Zealand Cup? He won it in 73. It's a good bet around there because it's called the Golden Mile and it's just every... Like I think uh, Michael told me there was 30 or 36 winners have come directly in that one area. Yeah, well, they, they all trained in that area and, well, on that road. So um, I don't know how come they all all um, bought beside one another, but, um, yeah, there's some great trainers down that road. There's a lot of history too. Yes. Um, that's what I did enjoy about that road. Yeah, well, Dad bought his block off Jim Delgetti, Grand Delgetti's father, so it goes way back, you know. Yeah, it does indeed, and there's a lot of history. Um, you don't, you, you were, saying, we were saying there before, you used to train and, and break in, you've cut right back now on, on what you've done? Yeah, well, I've basically, I've, I'm 63 now, and, and I've lost a couple of good mates, um, and it's sort of been a bit of a wake-up call, and I think it's time to, everyone says you're too young to retire, but I'm just sort of semi-retiring. Um, you know, most trainers, most full-time trainers are doing 80, 90 hours a week, which um, is quite abnormal, the lifestyle. And um, so I'm basically cutting down to sort of 40 hours and, and sort of I've got nine grandchildren and um, I like to spend some quality time with them. And I still want, I've, I've just started breeding. I've, I've uh, bought a full sister to Krug at the sales and uh, we actually had a full brother to Krug two days ago was born. So that, that'll be exciting. Yeah, he's a wee cracker. And, um, and, and I'm breeding from a couple of ni- other nice mares. So they've just been served to always be Mickey. And um, so I'm just sort of changing track a wee bit. And um, I, th- I think if you breed with quality bloodlines and go to commercial stallions, that you can make some money. Will they go for the yearling sales? Is that what you'll do? Or you keep them and race them? Or you're not sure? Yeah, I'm not, not a big racing fan because there's so many disappointments with soundness and um, so many issues ca- come along. And um, So I generally put them through the yelling sales and if they don't bring six figures, I'll bring them home. Bring them home and, and race them all, sell yeah, them, get them going again, sell them that way. I market them to Perth and I've marketed the horses all my life. And um, my father said to me when I was 20, he said, you'll never... You'll never make a train if you keep selling your best horses. But when I was 23, the first year I was trading, I sold a colt to, um, um, just trying to think of his name now, one of the great trainers in Australia for 56000 I bought my first house for 31, And um, it broke down after three starts. And I just thought, well, I think I'm doing the right thing. Um, Dad kept his horses, and um, he most probably had a dozen hundred thousand dollar horses that he kept and he won every classic in New Zealand and what have you but there's not a lot of money keeping them you know it's a lot of prestige um, but as far as um, making the dollar um, you just got to keep turning them over and um, and um, you know I'm at the stage now where I'd like to keep one you know because I can afford to keep one and um, so I've never had a good horse I've, I've, I've sold quite a few 
um, that have won derbies and what have you and um, hundred cups and what but I was thrilled to see them do the job um, and I don't know if I can handle the pressure I sort of um, I'll, I'll sleep with a maiden if I think it's good enough to win so if I get a if I get a classic horse um, my wife might be looking for me. Do you enjoy a day like today? you enjoy being here and, and amongst the racing people? Yeah, I don't. The thoroughbreds are a new, a new industry to me. I, I sort of been t- 100% focused on, on the standard bread, which they're not allowed to gallop. So thoroughbreds have never really interested me too much. Yeah. But you enjoy being here on a, on the good days, and it's and it's a good crowd here, isn't it? Yeah, no. It's as I say. Um, gen- generally, I'd be at home um, showing and um, breaking in Mark Purden's yellings, You know. Um, so this way you get to watch a grandson and enjoy yourself and yes. um, catch up with some people, even some random people with a camera. Yeah, well, as I say, it's sort of it's nice to semi-retire. A lot of horsemen don't semi-retire, and um, you know they don't reap the benefits from all their um, hard work, you know, and all the hours. And you know, a lot of people said to me, "What are you retiring at your age for?" And I said, "Well, I'm just playing catch up because you know seven days a week, you know, from the time I was 15." Um, you know, you break 3,000 horses in, it's, it's a huge, huge effort. It's over a lifetime, but you're pushing through 100 a year. It's a big operation, you know. It is indeed, Mark. Thank you. Thanks for joining me, mate. There's another good trotting bloke here. You know, as I was setting the cameras up, I'm going to do more interviews here, I reckon, and I did it adding, adding to it as well. But um, thank you very much for joining me. They've got the fashions on the field. It's a good day. It's a great setting here. It's sensational. It's Just a pity this Grand San Bionis can't be opened up, but uh, that's part, part of the... The history and the mystique of the property. So, but thank you very much for joining me, mate. You're welcome. Cheers.